Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our last section in chapter 8, and that section is 8.9 Perfect Squares, Part 1. The first thing I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to bring it back here a couple sections. I'm going to put 2x plus 3 squared. So do we remember what we have to do here with this square? It tells us that we have to go 2x plus 3, and then we have to do it again, 2x plus 3. Now, how do we multiply this? Now, remember that we have to FOIL or distribute every term, so we take that times there, so it's 4x squared. Please remember it's squared. And then that guy times there, so it's plus 6x. And then here times here, which is plus 6x. And then the last times the last, which is plus 9. Can we simplify? We can simplify the middle guys. So it turns out to be 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Let's take a peek at this next guy. Doing the same thing, let's go ahead and go 2x minus 3. And then 2x minus 3. Again, Let's multiply. We take that 2x times 2x to get 4x squared. This 2x times the negative 3 to get now this time a negative 6x. Here times here, negative 6x. And then here times here, which is plus 9. We simplify the middle guys again to get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Hopefully this shakes off a little cobwebs for us. Now, look at what we've come up with. Here for this red guy with a plus sign here, we've came up with a 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Well now, does this look very familiar to this, where we come up with a 4x squared minus 12x plus 9? Notice how we have a minus sign here in the middle when we have a minus sign squared, and here we have a plus sign in the middle and we have a plus sign here. Well if we take a look at this 2, what is this 2 of 4? It is, actually it's not half, but it's the square. So if we squared 2, we would get 4. And if we squared 3, we would get 9. Same situation over here. So now what if we were asked to factor something like this? Well now if we were asked to factor this, this is the same as this, right? So if this is a perfect square, meaning that I can take something times itself and get a 4, which I can, so I'm going to put it in parentheses here. I can get a 2 times 2x to be 4x, right? Now with the plus sign here, I'm going to go plus and plus. Now what times itself gives you 9? Well, that's going to be a plus 3 and a plus 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. But now with perfect squares, this would be an example of a perfect square. With perfect squares, we have to double check our work. So I'm going to double check it in green. How do we double check our work? We have to take 2x times the last guy, so the front term times the last term, to get 6x, and then the middle two terms times each other, and that's a positive 6x. Do they add up to 12x? Yes, they do, so we did factor it. So our solution then would be the quantity 2x plus 3 times the quantity 2x plus 3. Taking a look at this guy. This guy is the same as this, yes? where 4x squared, we can split that apart, correct, and make it what multiplies times itself to be 4x squared, and that's going to be 2x and 2x. Now we have to pay attention to the sign, though. It's going to be a negative, a negative 3 and a negative 3. Again, we have to multiply the two outermost guys to get a negative 6x and the innermost guys to check our work, negative 6x. That adds up to a negative 12x. So we did find our work, or we did find the correct get solution. So now here are the factors. 2x minus 3 times the quantity 2x minus 3. If you wanted to, we could rewrite this as 2x minus 3 squared. Right? But we do have to make sure that we check our work every time because sometimes they might not add up to this. So like I said before, this is factoring perfect square trinomials. And now this is how we write it algebraically. So if we had an a squared, or this could be a 4, a 9, a 16, a 25, any number squared, we would split that apart. Something times itself would go here. The other number would go there. Same with b and b. And looking down here, it's exact same thing, except there's minus signs. So now let's try this one. 
Let's factor this, and if we cannot factor it, if it cannot be factored, we're supposed to write prime. So let's go ahead and factor this. Well, is there a number times itself that will multiply to 9? Well, hopefully, we said 3, and I'm going to tack on that x to get x squared, and so those three x's go right there. Is there any number that multiplies times itself to 4? Yes, there's a 2 that multiplies the 4, but now it adds up to a negative, so what two signs have to go in the middle? A negative, so let's double check our work here. We have to take the first times the last to get negative 6x, the two middle guys to get a negative 6x, so now it adds up to a negative 12x. We found the middle guy, so then we did find our factor. So we factored this to be 3x minus 2 times the quantity 3x minus 2. If you want to rewrite it, you could go 3x minus 2 and that squared. Let's try some more. Let's try 2 now. Now, can is there a perfect, is this a perfect square? Can we find something to multiply to 25 times itself? Well, if we split it apart, that would be. 5x would go in front, and 5x would go in front of the next parenthesis. Now, what times itself would be 9? Well, that would be 3, so I'm going to put a 3 in the back. Now, it adds up to a negative, so let's put both negatives in between. Now, please remember, guys, it is very important that we check our work because all of these problems won't be perfect squares. So it's negative 15x, and then we take times the two middle guys, negative... 15x, and I forgot my 1. Does that add up to negative 30x? It adds up to negative 30x, so we found our factors, and again, you could rewrite it. Now, like I said, they might not be perfect squares. They might be a difference of squares. Well, is this a difference of squares? Well, what times itself multiplies the 6? I can't really think of anything, but... Can I take away the 6? Can I factor out the 6? Well, I have to look at this 96. Yes, I can. I can take out that 6 here and here. So I take out that 6, and I'm going to be left with x squared. I'm going to be left with an x squared minus 16. Now, is this an example of a difference of squares? Yes, it is. So let's factor that like it is a difference of squares. We have x squared, so we have to split that in half. Or not split in half, I'm sorry, square root it. Or it is x. And now what multiplies to a negative 16? What times itself multiplies to a negative 16? That is a negative 4 and a positive 4. Remember that we did not touch this x, or we did not touch that 6, so we have to bring it down. And so now we factor number 3. Also, we will not only be factoring uh, perfect squares and difference of the squares, we might bring it all the way back where we have to do it the old school way where we have to take this first term times the last term. Well, let's try one of these. But first, always the very first thing you want to do when factoring is to see what we can take out. Take the most of everything that you can take out. Well, I'm given a 12, 22, and 70, also with M's. What can I take out of all those numbers? They are all even, so I know I can take out a 2. So I take out a 2 and set it on the side. Can I take out some letters? The smallest M I have is that single M, so I'm going to take out that single M. Now I'm going to be left with, all right, 12M cubed divided by 2M is 6M squared. 22M squared divided by 2M is a minus 11M. And then 70m divided by 2m is a minus 35. Now here, is 6 a perfect square? Can I think of anything that multiplies to 6? No, I cannot. So now what do we have to do? Well, bringing it back a little bit, we have to take that 6 times the negative 35, which gives us a negative 210. So now we need factors of negative 210 that add up to a negative 11. Well, it ends in 0, so now I know it's divisible by 5. So I have 5 and 42. It adds up to a negative 11. So which one should be negative, the smaller number or the bigger number? The bigger number, so 5 minus 42, or 5 plus a negative 42 is negative 37. So that doesn't work. Let's try some more. Well, it also ends in 0, so let's try a 10. 
So 10 times negative 21, and that adds up to be negative 11. Look here, we found our factors. So let's go ahead and factor that. We go parentheses. Remember, we bring that 6m down. We split up that 6m, bring that 6m down again. We put a positive 10 in there, a negative 21 in there, and we also have to remember to bring down this 2m because we did not touch it. Also, remember, we have to take out this 6 because we brought too many 6s down. So here, what can I take out? I'm trying to get up to a factor of 6. I have to take out a 2. Well, now here, what can I take out? The biggest number I can take out is 3. So let's rewrite this. Bringing the 2m down, we have 2m, and then we bring down 6m divided by 2 is 3m plus 5, and then 6m divided by 3 is 2m minus, and then 21 divided by 3 is 7. So now we factor this whole thing, and it's right here, right? We did not use perfect squares, or we did not use perfect or differences of squares, but our factors are right here. We did a little old school where we had to take the first term times the last term and see what adds up to the middle term. Make sure we take out a total factor of what number is in front. Let's try one more. Number five. Again, we're asked to factor this guy. Is there anything that we can take out? Always think, is there anything that we can take out right away? Well, 3, 24, and 48 are all factors of 3, so I'm going to take out a 3. How about my letters? Can I take out a K? Absolutely. So I take out a K. What am I going to be left with? I'm going to be left with a K squared minus 8K plus 16. Well, that's interesting. Now I have to keep going with this guy. Well, is this a perfect square? Yes, 16 is a perfect square. And what do you think those perfect squares would add up to? A 8, because the factors of 16 are 4 and 4, adds up to an 8. So I'm going to keep factoring this. K squared is a perfect squared, so I'm going to break that apart, put K in front, and I'm going to put 4 back here and 4 back here. Now these 4s need to multiply or add up to what? A negative 8, so I'm going to put negative and negative. Bring the 3K down because I did not touch it. Now please make sure when you use perfect squares that we have to, we have to make sure that they add up to negative 8. So I'm going to take the first term, or first term times last term to get negative 4K. The two middle terms times each other to get negative 4K. They do add up to negative 8K, so we are good. So we did find our answer, which is right here, if I try my best to put a rectangle around it, 3K times the quantity K minus 4 times the quantity K minus 4. If you really want to, go ahead and rewrite it. You could go ahead and go 3K times the quantity K minus 4, that squared. And that does it for section 8.9, Perfect Squares, Part 1. Good day.